disaster has struck. Chelsea midfielder Jorginho has combined with Liverpool Football Club to blow the top four race wide open. I can't believe what I'm saying. It should have been in the bag. It felt like it was in the bag. But it's very difficult to predict what way it's going to go now. Chelsea, due to their profligate nature, are now struggling, in my opinion, for top four. When you look at Liverpool's fixtures, they play, they play West Brom, Palace and Burnley. I think they're three very winnable fixtures for them. And Chelsea, preoccupied with the FA Cup, preoccupied with the Champions League, playing Leicester and Aston Villa in the league. Two wins now essential. It's on a knife edge. But Liverpool beating Manchester United 4-2 away from home is going to steer the momentum towards a side from Merseyside. This was a really enjoyable game. I won't go so far as to call it a delectable medley of footballing splendour, but it was up there. I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. And the magnificence, the pomp and circumstance around this fixture, Manchester United versus Liverpool. It is the elite, the pinnacle of English Premier League football. It was brilliant. It felt good. And it was good that the game went ahead. Uh, it nearly didn't. There was some protest going on at Old Trafford. Protests that I wholeheartedly endorsed, by the way. I think that uh, green and gold till the club is sold is something that uh, I have full backing for. And I hope the Manchester United fans are able to make their presence felt and able to make Joel Glazer consider his position in the club. But the game did go ahead. And I think the Manchester United fans made their statement. And I think it's probably right that the game was played. It was played at a high tempo. It was enjoyable. Liverpool were magnificent. They were back to their old self. Manchester United were all over the place. Obviously, their season's effectively over in the Premier League. They've secured what they wanted to do there. Ambitions are not quite what they wanted them to be. Their ambitions would have been to win the Premier League. But after that wasn't possible, securing top four status was the priority. That's done. Now their full focus will be revolving around attaining silverware in Europe. So this fixture is a little bit of an inconvenience to them. There's no jeopardy in it for them. And you could kind of tell with the way they played. They weren't good. And what I thought was really interesting, right? The keeper, Henderson. People seem to talk about the hair being past it. There was a love for Henderson, the way he played for Sheffield United. Dodgy. I'd say at least the first and third goals were his fault. I'd also make a case for the fourth one, to be honest. I think that uh, you know it was, it, that fourth goal actually came at a huge time because Liverpool were far and away the better team. Liverpool had that game in the bag and suddenly it wasn't like that. Suddenly there was real uh, jeopardy and uncertainty as to whether Liverpool were going to secure the three points until Matic overruns it, Jones sort of hooks it and Mo Salah runs through on goal. And if I'm being really kind to Henderson, what I'm going to say is... Mo Salah gave him the eyes, the old, uh, but I don't think he did. Mo Salah's entire body shape suggested he was going to put it to the right where he put it. Henderson flummoxed. Like, am I getting it wrong here? I thought Henderson was terrible. And it's actually incredibly disrespectful to compare Henderson to De Gea. De Gea hasn't had a great time of it of late, but was at one stage Manchester United's best player. And is still, in my opinion, head and shoulders above Henderson. Let me know if you agree with that in the comments, please. But yes, in a really ominous way for Chelsea, Liverpool look classy. But yes, in a really ominous way for Chelsea, Liverpool look classy again. Jota, fantastic. Salah, glorious. I mean, Trent Alexander-Arnold is a Rolls Royce of a footballer. I don't really understand why people aren't quite on track with that. I don't understand who the cheeky non-conformists are when it comes to Trent Alexander-Arnold. He's a class act and he looked the part today. Excellent delivery, overall play, superb. And when you compare that to what was going on at United, as I've touched on already, Henderson, just not good enough. Just genuinely not good enough. Fred had a mare, Luke Shaw had a mare, and Luke Shaw was, you know, one of their players of the season. Just not good enough. Appalling, I would go so far as saying. Um, but it was a bit all over the place for Manchester United, and we're going to talk about it again. We've done it on this channel many times, but it's set pieces. What is it with Manchester United and set pieces? Do you want to play a little game? I made a list of the teams that have scored corners against Manchester United. Are you ready for this? It's so long. The list goes like this. Southampton. 
Paris Saint-Germain, twice. West Ham United, Sheffield United, Leeds United, Manchester City, AC Milan, Burnley, Leicester and Liverpool have all scored corners against Manchester United. Like that is just not good enough. And at the back, they were all over the place. And do you know what it, what became apparent? You know the old thing, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. You know, you put up a parking lot and you don't know what you've got till it's gone. You find paradise and you put up a parking lot. Harry Maguire is paradise. And every other Manchester United centre half is a parking lot. Manchester United are so reliant on Harry Maguire. And look, he doesn't get the glory or the uh, acclaim that Van Dijk or Diaz or Stones or Thiago Silva even gets. But he is a brilliant defender. Harry Maguire is a brilliant defender. I'm not interested in the price tag. I'm not interested in what people like to say about him in some sort of disparaging way. He's a brilliant player. He leads the line very well. He organises a defence very well. He's brave. If you crossed a Range Rover into that Manchester United penalty box, he would head it out. He plays with the tenacity and the lion heart that you need to play that position. And I'm a little bit bored of the Harry Maguire slander. So Harry Maguire was sorely missed today, sorely missed. Um, but nobody really played particularly well for Manchester United. I mean, Rashford and Cavani worked well, they got a bit of luck. It was a bolt from the blue, but they got their club back into it. And it looked like, for a moment, it looked like it could be uh, trouble for Liverpool. But in the end, no go. Liverpool were far too strong and Salah danced through to slot it past Henderson. Far too easily, if you ask me. So at the second time of trying, the biggest game in English football concludes. And uh, Liverpool fans were right. They often say to us that if you give the ball to Bobby Firmino, he'll score. And score he did. Si, signore. Um, I'm worried. I'm worried about Liverpool. I don't know if I've got this blind belief. It's been filtered into me. Because I sit next to Lawrence McKenna on the kickoff. I think. I just kind of believe in Liverpool. I believe in Klopp. And viral osmosis from Liverpool... Uh, it hits me that, that I feel like they're going to do it. I feel like they are one of the best and most likely teams to make it to wherever the promised land is. So I am genuinely fearful. They have kind fixtures, but I mean, Chelsea have two fixtures. We can do this. It's in our hands. So it's very tight. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to leave you on is this. Manchester United, think about that club. Think about what that club means over the years. Everything that you know to be Manchester United. Whatever era, doesn't matter whether you're talking about Beckham, doesn't matter whether you're talking about Best, Law, doesn't matter if you're talking about Ronaldo, Rooney. Wherever it is, the Manchester United team that we know, this isn't it, is it? This mentality, this acceptance of losing because they've you know, secured what they needed to do. I just wonder, and maybe I'm looking for holes in a side that don't exist, so please don't go mad if you don't agree with me. But I just wonder if what we're seeing here is a slight issue in their mentality. They've lost to Leicester, they've lost to Liverpool, both at home, both well beaten. And I know the game doesn't mean anything, but for me it's far too easy to dismiss it as that. But maybe I'm totally wrong. So do me a favour, comment below. Is there something to worry about here, Manchester United fans? Do you have a problem? Do you think that there's an issue with the mentality of the club? Or are you simply keeping your powder dry for when you uh, unleash a murder on the dance floor? Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, would you do me the honour of giving it a like? It really does help me out, so please consider doing that. And if you really enjoyed it, why not click subscribe in a bit, my friends?